Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Gentech PC product showcase. Today's video is going to be showcasing and reviewing the Aorus X7 Pro V5 SL2. So we have a 17 inch gaming laptop that we have covered before, but of course all things get upgraded with new goodies over time. So we'll be showcasing it again to cover all of those new upgrades. So we have a lot of things to cover today in our full length review. And of course we have to start with our very basic unboxing process. This is going to be showing that we have a very good shipment here with the outside box protecting it during the uh, shipping process with foam inserts on the corners. And the interior box has all of our goodies. The interior box with the Aorus being just a, a plain black box with the logo on it. With our laptop on the top, we saw that it was protected with that sleeve. Underneath of it, we have the product manual warranty information. Underneath of that, we're also going to find the power adapter cable, which will change based on your region, and the power adapter itself. And here's a quick look at the power adapter as far as how much power it provides. And we get one little extra goodie from Oris here with the X7, and that's a uh, small sized USB flash drive. Okay, let's jump over to the unveiling of the X7. As we pull the protective sleeve off of it, as you can see, it is, of course, as we mentioned, 17 inch form factor, but it is a very thin form factor. So even though you do have the diagonal size, it is not nearly as thick or as chunky as many other 17 inch gaming laptops. Especially considering that this model has SLI, so dual video cards, it does maintain a very thin profile for those features. Now let's go ahead and weigh it in to back up the claims of how thin and light this laptop is. 7 pounds and 3 ounces for the Aorus X7 by itself. And if you're doing the full loadout with the power adapter included, you're at 9 pounds and 3 ounces. Now it's time to take our measurements. Of course we have standard coins on here for scale. You can see the rear is standing a little bit higher than a quarter while the front is a little bit less so you do have a slight wedge and the tape measure is there to give you the full accurate details of how big it is and next stop is going to be the system BIOS so here we go we're just going to do a quick run through the BIOS so you can see some of the options available to you For the RAM slots, you can see that we have two slots taken with 8 gigabytes in each, so 16 gigabytes of RAM out the door, and you can upgrade it all the way up to 64 gigabytes if you load all four slots. So after covering the system BIOS, the next thing to do chronologically is going to be see how long it takes for the system to boot. And we're showing 14 seconds even for a full boot cycle. Next up, we've got the command and control software. This gives us quick access to many of the system features. Fan control, Wi-Fi, brightness, volume. A lot of these are usually built in through function keys, but we have access to other things such as the OC launcher, this is an unlocked CPU on the laptop so we can overclock it and it's not done through the BIOS, it's done through the software. 
On the left hand side, you see that we have our gaming keys, our macro keys that we can set up for many different features. There's tons of preset features already programmed in there. You can just drag and place, or you can do full programming and customize your own keys. If you launch the audio software from the command and control center, you'll see that you have lots of options in here as well. From standard volume control all the way through to custom EQ settings that are tailored to different modes, whether it be movies, music, or games. And of course, you can go in there and do your own custom EQ and get full control over those sounds. Now time to go into the device manager, get the nitty gritty on all of our hardware. Moving into display adapters, you'll see GTX 970 Mobile, two of those listed, they're running in SLI. We do have Killer present for our network adapter and that gives us brand name connectivity for great connectivity on the network side. The Intel Core i7-6820HK, that's an unlocked quad-core CPU. There's also a few other hidden goodies here and there. We do have the ambient light sensor hidden under the sensor section that can uh, dynamically control the screen brightness. Overall, a very good package. Where it counts for the performance is going to be the video card and the CPU and, of course, our system RAM. Those interested in our monitor, we have a 1920 by 1080 p resolution, so a standard 1920 resolution. If you're interested in the actual panel ID and going to look that up online, we have that on screen for you as well. Now one thing that's interesting to note is while we don't have a really high resolution or anything super special about the screen, it does have a 75 hertz refresh rate as compared to the more standard 60 hertz. So breaking that down into a layman's term, that just means the screen will get updated more often so in a fast paced game, you might find that beneficial, but even more so, the important feature is that it does have the NVIDIA G-Sync technology uh, capacity built right in. And once you turn that on, then you'll get rid of all of your tearing and get the best screen updates directly from the GPU through a, a direct synchronization rate. With the initial tour of the inside of the system done, it's time to move to the outside now. We'll take a look around everything as far as what you're gonna touch, what you're gonna interface with, all the connectivity options available. As you can see, we'll start here in the front. We have one large touchpad with left and right clicks built into it, a full-size chiclet keyboard with backlighting. And as we saw earlier when we talked about our macro keys, we do have the full set of G keys on the left-hand side. Five keys are macroed and one key to change through your macro presets. To the sides of the laptop, the front side just has our status LEDs, no interfaces there. To the right hand side, we'll see we have the SD card reader, a USB 3 port, a USB 3.1 type C port, HDMI output, mini display port output, and then of course we have some openings for the system cooling. To the rear side, this is where we're going to find the power port near the center to charge the laptop and run off of main power. And we do have another USB 3 port connection. Left and right sides, of course, have the main exhaust for the cooling. And you get a little bit of look at the contouring of the LCD lid. And finally, moving over to the left side, we have our Kinnickston lock port on the far left edge. Then next we have our RJ45 connection for the local network connectivity. We do have another HDMI output here. We do have two video cards, so we do have extra outputs. And you can actually pop that off and find the hidden HDMI output. That's followed up by a standard VGA output, another USB 3 port, and two 3.5 millimeter audio connections, one for your headphones and one for a microphone. So that wraps up the perimeter of the laptop and all of the connectivity. I'll go ahead and shut the lid and give you that one last spin around so you can see the full tour as far as view angles, what to expect with the laptop. And of course, next we're going to jump into our benchmarks. So our first test to perform today is going to be our sound levels check. We're going to see how much 
noise the system's producing with just its cooling. We have everything quiet in the room, no speakers on. This is an at rest state. And of course, we'll go ahead and crank it up under load in a minute and compare the rest to load. Now these figures are kind of arbitrary. They don't mean a whole lot on their own, but if you look at some of the other reviews we've done, you can compare one laptop against another. And that gives you a really good baseline to determine if this is a relatively quiet running laptop or a relatively loud running laptop, just based on comparison. And so far things are fairly quiet with the system, nothing spiking out of the ordinary range. Taking a quick intermission on the noise testing, we've got the read and write speeds here on the C drive through Crystal Disk Mark. And now we're going to be starting off the important stuff, the gaming performance benchmarks. So those are currently running on the system. We can do two tests at once. We'll have the performance numbers crunching while we go back and look at those noise levels again. So you can see that we went from the mid-20s now closer to the 60 mark for the noise levels. It has gone up accordingly based on having the system under load. So keep in mind that all of the noise levels are recorded at a worst case scenario with a microphone directly over the exhaust. As you move away from the laptop, even small amounts of space starts to drop that number dramatically. So these are not uh, really good to take it to direct comparison as how loud something would be in the room if you were listening to it. And our first benchmark for the gaming performance has concluded. 3D Mark 11 with a performance score of 14,758. Down below the GPU-Z information on the GTX 970 mobile. And over here on the left we have the very important temperature information as far as how hot everything got during those tests. The CPU stayed at about 80 degrees Celsius, one core spiked at 87. And then down below we have two video cards. So the first one got up to 75 degrees and the second at 74. So the video card stayed very cool and so did the CPU. The, the cooling system did actually really, really well in the X7. Now we're moving into the next gaming performance benchmark that's gonna be starting to run in the background. And while that's running, we're taking some external temperature readings as well. So with the external readings, what you're looking for is to see heat come from the system, usually through the keyboard area and of course through the exhaust, but you don't want to find temperatures to be high where your hands would be uh, resting on the palm area or the touchpad, because that's where you'll feel the heat and actually cause your hands to sweat and get nasty while you're using the laptop over exterior periods of time. But everywhere else is a good sign because if the heat's coming out of the laptop, that means that's why everything's running so cool inside of the system, which is exactly what we just saw on the last test results. So, so far on average, the X7 does tend to have higher external temperatures than what we might normally see. And that number could be misleading as to make you think it's a bad thing, but it's actually a good thing because that means that the system is doing a very good job of getting rid of the heat. It's got that thin body and already usually gaming laptops with very thin bodies have overheating issues. But in this case, the system stays very cool during our benchmarks and that's the reason why. All right, so the Fire Strike benchmark is now concluded. We got a score of 10,647. Very respectable scores there. We'll go back to check our temperatures again and we'll see the same results on the CPU and GPU as before. So things are staying very cool. All right, the next test is going to be the speaker volume levels.
All right, now it's time for us to move into the final segment of our review. We're done with all the benchmarks and we're moving into the disassembly. We would recommend you do not try to do this at home on your new laptop because you could void your warranty. But if you are going to take it apart in the future for self upgrades, keep in mind the screws have different lengths and they need to be put back in the same way you took them out. So keep track of that. Now, if you are interested in upgrading the X7 from its stock configuration, because you do have the extra SSD slot and the extra RAM slots, the best thing to do is to actually include that in your order and we can make all the changes before you even receive the laptop and keep it covered under the warranty. Now, as far as where everything's located, we'll see we have our mechanical hard drive for mass storage in the corner, some speakers, we have our cooling fans in the other two corners, uh, a pretty massive heat pipe collection there because we have to connect both to a single CPU and two GPUs. And in the center, we have all four of the system RAM slots easily available. Over here, we have the system subwoofer and two completely unfilled M2 SSD slots. So over on the left, we have the single occupied one. That means you have quite a bit of room to upgrade. You can get two full SSDs in there and then you could reconfigure the system for RAID 0 if you'd like and make those disk access speeds go much higher than they are now. So the uh, cold boot time could be cut down quite a bit and your capacity could be increased. And so unfortunately, we are now at the point of our video where we're at our end. We will be concluding the video and we just want to close with saying that if you're interested in the Oris X7, then of course go to our website, gentechpc.com and look at the product page for this model. We'll have it in the video description. There you can find the full system specs and of course the current pricing and availability. Now, if you have any questions that the video didn't answer for you up front, then feel free to ask them here in the video comment section. Then we can answer it for you and everybody else that might have had the same question. But if you do have some personal one-on-one -on -one questions you need help with, then feel free to contact us by phone or email. And of course, we'll be happy to get those questions answered for you. So once again, we just want to remind you that this was Gentech PC, and we'll see you next time.